Hello and welcome back to our channel where we showcase the greatest military feats of history. In today's video, we will be diving deep into one of the most important battles in the Scottish Wars of Independence. It's the Battle of Bannockburn in 1314. Before we get into that, I'd like to ask you all to help support this brand new channel by liking and subscribing if you enjoy this video. This is the fifth battle video we have posted, so every new subscriber is greatly appreciated. Also, comment on any battles you would like to see us cover in the future. But now let's get into the important stuff. First things first, like always, we need to know the strategic context behind this battle. King Edward I of England defeats William Wallace at the Battle of Falkirk in 1298, crushing the Scottish uprising and annexing Scotland. In 1306, the Scottish rebel under the leadership of Robert Bruce, soon to be King Robert I of Scotland. By 1314, Bruce commands virtually all of Scotland and is poised to capture Stirling Castle, one of few remaining English strongpoints in Scotland. Edward II of England leads an army north to relieve the Stirling garrison, but is blocked by Bruce's army along the Bannock Burn. The heavy cavalry of the English vanguard attempt to outflank the Scots but are repulsed. The repulse of their knights and defeat of a famed English knight in a duel against Bruce demoralized the English in the first day of combat. Bruce decides to attack the next day when he learns Edward is bivouacking his army on soggy ground, hemmed in between the Bannockburn and Pellstream rivers, both at high tide. The stakes are high for this battle, and are as follows. An English victory would relieve Stirling Castle and preserve the English foothold in Scotland. A Scottish victory would force the surrender of Stirling Castle and virtually eliminate English strongpoints in Scotland. The English have 5,500 spearmen, 6,000 longbowmen and 2,250 heavy cavalry, clearly outnumbering the Scottish as they have only 6,000 pikemen, 1,500 longbowmen and 500 light cavalry. Now let's get into the battle. The battlefield consists of the Karst of Balquitarock, a relatively dry, flat area compared to the surrounding terrain. The Karst is enclosed on three sides. To the east and south is the Bannockburn River and then smaller streams beyond it. To the north is the Pell Stream and then marshland beyond it. Stirling Castle, held by the besieged English garrison, lies to the northwest but is only easily accessible by moving west of the shown map and then north along the Roman road. This movement west is restricted by the Balquitarock Forest, which masks a modest elevation change. Bruce's objective is to prevent the English from relieving Stirling Castle, while Edwards is to do just that. Bruce deploys three Shiltrons of pikemen four ranks deep across the entire front, anchored by the right. Bruce plans to advance with this wall of pikemen, screened by archers, and force the English army into the cramped space between the rivers. Bruce keeps his cavalry and fourth Shiltron of pikemen in reserve. The Scottish deployment for battle surprises Edward. The English knights insist on leading the attack and deploy up front with only a few archers. The English infantry remain in a mass behind the cavalry, blocked from joining the battle by the English cavalry. The battle opens with an exchange of archery. Although the English archers win this exchange, it diverts fire away from the Scottish Shiltrons, which are able to advance unhindered. Arguments among English nobility as to who should lead the attack persist until the Earl of Gloucester impetuously leads his knights against the lead Scottish Shiltron. He is killed in this first engagement. The rest of the English cavalry join the attack against the advancing Scottish Shiltrons, but are unable to gain momentum due to their density and are halted by the Scottish Wall of Pike. The English infantry press forward, further restricting the English cavalry's space to maneuver. The English archers attempt to influence the battle by firing over their cavalry. Many of these arrows cannot find their target in the entangled mass of pikemen and cavalry and end up hitting the English cavalry in the back, disordering them. The Scottish Shiltrons advance steadily, shoving the English cavalry into the mass of infantry behind them, creating further confusion. As the Scottish line advances, dressed off by the right, the ground becomes more open, meaning the Scottish left flank becomes more open. An English archer unit takes the initiative and crosses the Pell Stream to establish a firing position to exploit this fact. The Scottish pikemen continue to push the English cavalry backward into their own infantry, inciting further confusion. The advance stalls on the Scottish left as the English archers there fire a devastating enfilade of arrows into the leftmost skiltron. Bruce quickly dispatches his light cavalry to chase the archers away before his left collapses. Bruce reinforces his weakened left wing with his reserve Shiltron and orders his archers to fire into the congested English mass, every arrow striking a target. The English nobility see the day is lost and begin to flee. Edward himself flees north across the Pell Stream towards Stirling Castle with a significant complement of knights. 
Bruce therefore keeps his pikemen in formation for fear of a counterattack from this direction and due to the high number of routing but undefeated English infantry. Nonetheless, many English drown attempting to cross the Bannockburn. Edward was refused entry to Stirling Castle and fled south instead. Bruce raided into England thereafter but avoided any major battle. In 1318, Bruce captured Berwick, the last Scottish town occupied by the English. In 1322, Bruce gave battle and defeated Edward again at the Battle of Old Byland. Finally, in 1328, England and Scotland signed the Treaty of Edinburgh Northampton recognizing Scotland as an independent kingdom with Bruce as its first monarch. That's it for today's video. We hope you found it interesting. And if you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, and comment on any battle you would like to see us cover in the future. We will see you next time for another epic battle of history.